Assalamu alaikum. This is the second class of our professional development program at the self learners that we are running for students. We have with us all these students sitting here trying to become professional, trying to be someone who contributes to the society more effectively. And uh, in this class, we'll be covering, we'll, we'll start covering business studies. We started by discussing, if I say you are a professional, what does it mean in general, in your communication and your behavior? How, how would I look at you and say you are not a professional? So this is the very, this was the very basic definition of being a professional. Even if you have studied everything, you've done your MBA, you are, you're doing a job for 10 years. Even then your behavior or your communication would let me know that you're not a professional. Don't we say that sometimes we go to a restaurant and we say they are not professional. Although they are there for 10 years or 20 years, sometimes we go to a manager and the way he behaves, the way he talks, the way he communicates, we say this is not a professional communication. This is not a professional behavior. So this is why we covered this up for in the first class that being a professional other than knowing so many things other than having so much experience being a professional is reflected through your, through your communication and your behavior so we covered that first and now we are going into depth professional a person who represents a profession a person who's been into a profession for a time a person who knows a profession. For example, you say, uh, uh, Sumaya can sew your clothes. Go and get your kurta or any other dress uh, made by Sumaya. Get it made by Sumaya. You would say, is she a professional tailor? When we say a professional tailor, it's, it automatically means that this tailor has had an experience of tailoring. Isn't it? Being professional automatically means in our minds, we automatically think if someone is a professional, he must be in that profession. He must have spent in, in that profession quite a lot of time. He must be experienced in that profession. So, how can I make you professional just by sitting in my class? It is a very important question. For example, this is a professional development program, isn't it? I want you to make you a professional tailor. Can I make you a professional tailor just sitting in the class? No. If you want to be a professional tailor, we'll have to experience tailoring. We'll have to learn how tailoring is made, done. But what we are doing here is, as I said in my first class, there are always two aspects of a person into a profession. One aspect is his technical skill and knowledge. The other is his behavioral skills. So technical and behavioral. In our professional studies, we say these are three things that we consider in a person. S, K, A. Skill, knowledge and attributes. Sometimes people call it attitude. Skill, knowledge and attitude. These are the three traits that reflect or that tell us how professional a person is for a certain job. I'll, I'll eventually change my terminology. I'm using the terminology that you understand at the moment. Then I'll eventually change my terminology for someone who knows what I'm talking about. You'd say, okay, you're not using the correct terminology. It is called this and this is called that. But as I'm teaching students, I'm trying to use the terminology which is familiar for you. I'll eventually lead you to that term 
that it is that is actually used for it so skill knowledge and attitude these are the three aspects of a person that any manager see when he tries to hire someone skill knowledge and attitude what is skill what is knowledge how is it gained what is an attitude first of all let's cover knowledge first by knowledge we mean the minimum amount of education that a person must have something the, he already knows doesn't mean that he has experience in that area he must know this first before he can enter into this job for example if you want to be an engineer you must have a be degree you must be a be you have a be degree a bachelor in engineering you cannot be an engineer before that because pakistan engineering council will not give you a license if you have that degree do you think you are a very good engineer you will be a very good engineer there is a chance that you could be a good engineer or not but entering the engineering market requires you to have a certain set of knowledge even if you don't have any experience that knowledge is required first so that knowledge normally in normal circumstances by knowledge we mean education although there are other things that could classify into knowledge but as we are talking about students and we are trying to simplify the things by knowledge will be will mean education okay if you want to be a doctor is there any knowledge that is required to be a doctor you have to do your mbbs otherwise you cannot be a doctor there is a minimum criteria for being a doctor if you are not an mbbs you can have as much as experience you would like you could be treating people very good but you cannot be a doctor there is a movie about that as well patch adams a very famous very very famous movie and uh, uh, someone copied that movie into an indian movie munna bhai actual movie was patch adams uh coming back the three things that i would look into a person i am trying to hire first thing is his knowledge does he have the minimum knowledge that is required in my area in the in the area that i am working in secondly skills skills are reflected through experience i would see how much experience he has abbas bhai is asking that how much education how much skill is required in e-commerce business and how can we grade that as i am saying that different jobs have different models of ska skill knowledge attitude some have a heavily knowledge a knowledge heavy ska their ska is knowledge heavy this means they require at least this degree to be done otherwise you cannot enter for example doctor and engineer are knowledge heavy and that is why students in pakistan like to do their medicine or their engineering because you can always be a manager even if you don't know how to you can always be an engineer if even if you don't know how to construct a building because it requires you to pass a test only it's easier for students to pass tests then do things in uh, in their experience so if you want to be for example uh, a programmer their uh, ska would be skill heavy not education heavy not knowledge heavy it doesn't matter if you know if you have read the books you have passed the exams but you cannot do the job in programming in development in sales in in the businesses that you are practically doing things knowledge is less important and skill is more important and your experience is more important for example i i ask you can you sell my product i want to sell a million of these products by the end of the year 
you say i have a degree in i have a masters in uh, marketing i have masters in sales i have got a phd in uh, online sales i have have you ever sold a product like ours no have you ever practically proved that you were able to generate a million sales in a year no how can we trust that you will be able to do that your degrees don't guarantee that so some jobs are skill heavy have skill heavy ska some jobs have knowledge heavy ska if you are a doctor you must be mbbs first you must know what is anatomy how i works i start telling you use this medicine that would be helpful in that type of disease you don't know what disease i'm talking about it would be difficult for me to train you so in in the in the uh, medicine in uh, if you want to become a doctor you'll have to first get certain knowledge then you have not be become a doctor it is not complete mbbs is not complete till you to tell you gain that experience which is called a house job so you first study and then you get a get that experience applying that knowledge into the real human uh, pathology or human uh, illness learn about different illnesses see how professional doctors are treating their those illnesses experience what you you knew now experience how it is treated how it is done so so the job for e-commerce is skill heavy okay what i cannot do in this program what we are not planning to do in this program we are not going to give you skill in this in the start of this program although the complete professional development program which runs for 2 2 years we are planning to start with basic knowledge you should know what business is you should know what professions are you should know what is the basic requirement to enter any profession you should know how to be successful in any profession so first we'll give you the knowledge we'll also work on your attitude this is something which could be worked on irrespective of whatever your knowledge set is irrespective of whatever your skill set is attitude is something that we could start working from day zero and believe me when you hire a person you mostly look into their skill or their knowledge but you fire a person because of their attitude you have hired a person who is very knowledgeable who is very skilled he has taught in 500 schools he has been teaching here and there and he comes into the school and he talks to the students in a way that you say oh i cannot afford this person he's he's he has such bad manners i have hired a programmer who is a very good programmer he sits with my other programmers and my programmers have started leaving the job and i cannot afford such a person most of the times when you hire you look at the skills and the knowledge because you you cannot judge attitude in one or two meetings because whenever a person comes and sits before you gives you an interview he would be in best of his manners he would present the best of himself his real attitude would start reflecting after he has or she has spent a few days with you or a few months with you uh, the real uh, experienced interviewers try to judge the attitude of the interviewee as well they try to ask questions that would put some pressure on the person and see how he works in pressure how he responds in pressure they will try to give you a situation where thus the person the interviewee is feeling that he is more confident let's see how he responds to situations where he is more confident than others in the room is he a bully is he afraid what type of personality that person has now we have some personality tests as well although no personality test can be 100% reliable as when we take a test we answer some questions and what our attitude is what we do actually answering something and doing something are two different things so no personality test no personality test can actually reflect exactly what you are from inside 
it's your choice to answer things if you give me there there's a there very f famous personality test if you give me a personality test i would tell you that in the result you would find me this 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 type of a person i know what this question wants to ask me i know what my answers would mean so i can change my answer according to the need of the job i can be a person who's introvert i can be a person who's extrovert because i only have to answer a question in this situation what do you do i know i do this but if i answer that i do this they would think that i am uh, a person whose locus of control is external and it would not reflect good on me i would answer according to the need of the situation so no personality test ever could reflect or could tell you 100% about a person's actual personality all those personality tests are are actually made in a way that they try to hide actual questions in in words so that you would not be able to understand what you are actually trying to know but still experienced people know what what the answer of this uh, question will lead to coming back i said most of the people who are hired although we try our best to judge the attitude of the person most of the people that are hired are hired because of their skill and their knowledge most of the people that are fired are fired because of their attitude okay so we can work on your attitude right from day one and we have started this is why our first class was about behavior and communication and behavior and communication both are related to our attitude we say professionalism is an attitude as well it doesn't only cover knowledge it doesn't only cover your skill professionalism also has an attitude aspect so we'll keep on touching that attitude aspects in aspect in our uh, future classes but for now for now what we what we plan to do is we plan to to give you some knowledge about professionals professionalism and different professions that are there how to operate in those professions how would you be more successful uh, in different professions this would be a knowledge set that we'll give you okay so we'll be giving you certain knowledge then we'll occasionally be touching upon different attitude sets that you must have we'll be giving you some practical situations where you'll have to perform and show your attitude and after the completion of four months of this course where we have given you enough information knowledge and we have trained enough attitude of yours we'll ask you to go into the market and start doing something professionally that will be our second phase of the project where we'll stop giving you further knowledge we'll say this course is complete now you know enough about businesses you know enough how to run a business now start something professionally you will be given different choices as i explained in in the uh, orientation session you will be given different choices you could join a company as a as a employee not internship as an employee you could start your own business you could join a project that we are doing uh, internally you could join an external partner there are many options that you would have but you will have to stick to it for 1.5 years and that that would uh, uh, enhance your experience we'll give you knowledge we'll develop your attitude then you go out and gain some experience and all this would be done before you have done your bachelors this would mean that when you are out after your complete education after completing your education when you are going out for the for a job you know what you are looking for you know what are your likings uh, which areas do you excel in and you already have an experience of doing that thing so you are not fresh as the market says okay so having said that what i was saying is that there are certain technical experience based skills required in a in a job and those technical experience based things are divided into education and experience some things you you get from education and some things you get from experience and then this is your behavior the way you are if you are punctual if you are uh, tidy if you are good to communicate with all those things 
so as i said we have an agenda to cover the knowledge set knowledge set of a student that has to be there if he, if he or she wants to get into the business certain terminology certain basic principles so let us start first by when i said as in the start of the lecture i said when we say profession we mean something that is being done commercially some some business some job and you can have many things as an example for that so moving on to our next point when we say business a business has many aspects and i'll be covering that very quickly because i don't want to be too theoretical i want to cover things that are practical in nature rather than covering uh, a long set of theory when we talk about business there is there are many things that you must know before you could say that i know business i i at least have some knowledge of the business a business starts with an idea then it has some some entity some some formation there is an idea phase there is a formation phase then then there is a phase where you are doing that business we we might say it's a production phase although not every business is producing something some businesses are, pro are giving are providing services then there is a production phase then you are trying to make that business grow there is a growth phase phase and there are many things in each phase that we would like to talk about similarly there are certain supplementary things that are there at every phase for example you need to look into your finances whatever phase you are in you have you are generating an idea i want to build a a, a 1500 story building now have you considered how much would be needed for that no i didn't consider that it's just my dream okay keep dreaming finances is something that you need to know right from the point where idea was being generated and company was being formed and then production or the provision of services was was taking place and growth was happening we are not talking about decline we are not pessimistic people we'll keep talking about growth so but i'll i'll cover everything that is covered in business studies but in a manner that is more effective that is more relevant to a person who goes into the market it is not it will not be done for the purpose of completing a course book we have all this knowledge stored in course books we are not going to cover any course book but we'll cover enough knowledge that that is required for a person who will be operating in the market okay so finances you need to know something about finances what are finances how they are generated where where does the money come from how to generate money because you will be required there are different types of areas where you will go in one area you will be required to generate your own money so how would you do that so you will require finances at all times you will require to required to manage people all the time m a n a g e s so there are things that you will be doing at all times and there are stages that your your business will be in so rather than starting from idea because idea is something which is very 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 important for a business we will not start with the, with idea although a company <laughs> a company starts with an idea but we will not start with an idea 
because the topic of idea is so important that we'll we'll keep it a, for a little bit later we'll start with the formation of a business we'll know we'll start by knowing how a business is formed in pakistan we'll always be talking about relevant things things that are relevant in our market we'll not talk about things that don't happen in our market and if you are going to operate internationally then we'll talk about the national market at the moment we are talking about formation of business in pakistan how a business is formed in pakistan there are so many types of businesses for example if you want to be a retailer a retailer is a business who is a retailer a person who opens up a shop and sells biscuits and chips and bread and uh whatsoever all the grocery items whatever he wants to sell a chicken shop if you want to open a meat shop a popcorn shop a biryani shop shop it could be a retailer who would be selling who would be buying from wholesaler and selling it to the to the public or it could be a small service provider who works at a very small scale like a shop of a barber you could open a hardware shop you could sell abayas you could open a beauty saloon you could open a a leather shop you could open a a estate agency is a shop it, it's it's necessarily a very small business most of the times most of the times sometimes estate agencies are very uh, a huge business because they are doing lots of business and uh, selling uh, very highly priced uh, houses sometimes they are also building the houses as well a estate agency similarly a retailer can also be a big retailer like imtiaz someone selling grocery could be a very big grocery seller so what i am talking about is uh, there is a, there there is there, there are a huge number of businesses that are very small in our country there is a huge number of businesses or you can say most of the businesses in our country are very small you can see how many barber shops you can see how many tailors and you can see how many industries they cannot compete the number of small scale businesses in our country and in any country is much much larger than the number of uh, large scale companies so in case if you are a very small company you don't need to register anywhere okay so if you want to be a very small scale business person you don't to do anything other than starting that business no registration no no paperwork no account no bank account you don't require anything in pakistan for example if you want to open a barber shop you just go rent a shop buy some equipment put a name of your shop on the display and start cutting the cutting hairs getting my point to open a grocery store you don't need to get yourself registered anywhere it's a very small scale job that i'm talking about a very basic shop retailer but the government at the moment wants all the small scale businesses to get themselves registered with the government and pay the tax on their income and it is very difficult at the moment for the government because there are so many small scale retailer uh, they know if all the retailers get enrolled and give 1000 rupees a month even there are so many retailers that it would be a, a huge sum and it is not wrong to register people who are doing business it's not wrong to do that government is already trying to put tax on those small retailers in other ways for example whenever someone sees a shop the electric companies changes their meter and noted notes on the meter that this meter belongs to a shop and that meter of the shop would get an extra tax so, so you are not registered you are not submitting any document anywhere but you are al already paying tax for opening a shop So the government has other ways of taking tax from you. 
so why not why not register yourself and pay tax on the through the right channel and get the bill uh, the tax in the bill uh, deducted okay so at the moment it is not required from a person to register his business but you can register a shop even if you are run starting a shop you can register your shop in the government and it could be a formal business proper business registered with the government now there let we are we are we are as we are talking about formation and this whole class we'll be talking about formation only where do you get the business to be registered as most of the problems in our country are finance related we have a problem of money like you know our country is always in debt so the most important ministry becomes the finance ministry or the interior ministry there was a time when the foreign ministry was one of the most important ministry but not now so forming a business starts most of the times with federal board of revenue from where federal board of revenue now there there comes a confusion if you live in karachi you have to start your registration from fbr and you get yourself registered as a business for no charges there are no charges for getting yourself registered as a business you can take any name there is no problem you can say whatever you are and it would not be protected you say i i thought about a name like the ugaldan store of flowers you say it's such a unique name i have registered this name and no one will take this name no getting registered doesn't mean that your name is protected on a very basic level getting registered with fbr means telling them that we are doing a business we'll annually tell you how much we earn and we'll submit our taxes if we have earned anything above the above the tax uh, basic uh, line you think my point <coughs> that's the question of the next level we'll discuss this in this class but at the moment i want to say sumaiya wants to open a tailor shop safia wants to open a boutique uh arva wants to open a mehndi shop and she says that i want to have a bank account you go and want to have a bank account the banker would say you cannot have an account unless you are registered with the fbr you will not be able to have a bank account either you are doing a job with a company that company is registered with fbr or you are working or you are doing a business of your own and that business is registered in fbr because fbr issues you a certificate and enlists you in a in a, a list that they propagate to banks every bank knows who is in fbr and who is not every bank knows every bank knows about every person who tries to go and open their account they know if that person is registered in fbr or not as a person as a business or as an employee whatever your category is if you are registered in fbr the bank will know okay and that list is atl active taxpayer list you can always send an sms to the fbr and they will tell you this identity card number this cnic number is in the atl or not this is called being if your number is in atl you are a it's a very famous term these days if you are in atl if you are you appear in atl you are a nowadays rain also doesn't come to non filers remember the term filer non filer we have two category of people in our country filer and non filer non filer will get uh, multiple tax on everything filer will get reduced tax on everything because filer is already paying tax so if your name is in the atl this means you are a 
filer. Filer is the person who files every year, tells the government, this is how much I earned. Please have a look at it. Now, there are millions of people who file their tax every year. Does the government and the FBR check every, each and every account? No. They only check accounts of people above a certain level of income. If they know this person has above a certain level of income, then they will check if he's telling the truth or not. You could you could file falsely. You could you could be earning hundred thousand and writing we are earning only only one thousand, and the government would not check you. Maybe it maybe for even ten years it might happen uh, that government would not check your account. But if your account is above a certain uh, level there are more chances of you being getting checked and if you are checked and something wrong is found then they'll call you a tax commissioner will send you a notice which will use you which you will receive through email as well as through post there will be a red stamp on the notice i, I we received that notice uh, a few years back because of them misunderstanding something and i went there and clarified things so it is very like uh, seems a bit scary all the red stamps and if you did not come it's a summon they can see our shop they can always check our accounts in the banks banks are liable to tell them everything if i have 10 accounts in my bank in banks and i only show one account in my fbi return it doesn't matter they know all the accounts that i have so they directly have access to our all the data that we have Khair, coming back to start a very small business you don't need to register anywhere but you decide that i want to avail certain facilities for example i want to open a bank account and this is almost that's it you don't get anything extra for filing you can open a bank account and you will get reduced tax for certain things like when you buy a car non filer pay more tax on buying a car filer pay less, te less tax on buying a car uh, in electricity bills if your bill is above 25000 filer will not get an additional tax non filer will get an additional tax of 7.5% so in if, if you are traveling abroad buying a ticket for filer is less expensive than a non filer but the non-filers say that we save so much tax by not filing that it's okay for us to give <laughs> at, the, at those moments. We are filer from start to end. Like my business is a filer. Like it's a, it's a filed business, registered business. This school is registered with multiple entities. First in FBR, then the... Uh, Ministry of Education, then uh, me myself personally am uh, a registered person uh, separately. I am a filer as well. I when I file and when I go to at the year end, I go and file uh, the tax returns. Filing the tax returns, I file for my school. I file for myself. I file for my wife. I file for my father. I file for my sister. Every person who is actively doing something, we have filed for everything, even if they are not earning enough money to be eligible for tax. Because it's it seems it seems to me that it's good that you are a filer rather than being a non-filer. What's there to hide? If you are earning more, tell them that you are earning more. It doesn't matter. You are already. Hmm? You might say that as as I am not earning more, it's easier for me to file. Whatever. So, once you become a filer, you will have to every year submit your, your, your details. If you skip any year, they will send you a notice. Many people also don't want to be a filer because of this. For example, you became a filer this year. Next year, you don't have time. Neither you are earning anything. You are not earning anything. But they will send you a notice. You didn't file this year. Come and file or we will block your account. We will block your sims. We will block you this Many sims got blocked this year because the people didn't file again. People who didn't file at all, they were okay. 
what they the people who are blocked were the people who filed in uh, the previous year but forgot to file this year their sims were blocked so this is the way our fbr operates it's it's okay this is the way things are now if you are running a business that's a bit bigger than a person opening a shop when a person opens a shop and registers with fbr that person is called sole proprietor now we are going into business studies sole sole means single sole proprietor single owner okay sole proprietor single owner you could also get your business registered as partner ship partnership would have more than one people who are opening the business together now you will have to do something more while opening a business for sole proprietor you'll only have to go to fbr website write your name and put some details bank account all this and you are done you have started your business but if you want to get your partnership registered you'll have to first make a partnership contract there is a contract where multiple partners would sign that we agree that these are the terms of partnership he'll get this much profit i'll get this much profit he'll be in charge of that i'll be in charge of that the things would be distributed in this way all the things that you want to decide discuss uh, finalize in your business or the rules that are to be there in the in your business they have to be there in the partnership deed you have to have a partnership document that you need to submit to the to fbr the partnership account is a little bit more difficult to open than the sole proprietor account you will have to need the consent of both the partners or three partners or four partners when you open a bank account in the for the partnership all the partners will have to go one person cannot open a bank account for partnership you say it's my partnership i am 85% owner no bring everyone who's a partner everyone will need to sign then you will not be able to have an atm card for partnership account in a sole proprietor account you can have an atm card you are the business owner you are the business this is your atm card but when you are partner with a person they will say who will get this atm card this partner or that partner and if a partner takes out money without telling the other partner how can uh, the bank be a partner to that so the bank does not issue atm card for a partnership account they don't allow you to check your balance online for partnership account again because when 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 we give power to one partner the other partner would not be able to see it might be possible that other partner is not seeing that doc, that that detail so what they do is they ask you to sign everything get everything signed by both the partners every time yes you can uh, once write it down in writing and get it signed by all the partners that on our checks any partner can sign and withdraw money this can be this can be written in the uh, account opening document this way if i am a partner i can also sign the check and get the money out all the partners don't need to sign the check but there are many businesses who write that even a check will not be accepted until all the partners have signed on that check whenever you open any uh, any form of business in fbr and go and open an account in the bank you also need to have a stamp with the name of your business all the checks that you sign they will have to have your sign as well as your stamp let me show you as uh, students who are online they'll miss this what can i say see i opened my company named mscs in a partnership so this is my checkbook if i sign this checkbook the checkbook will not be cashed because they will also need this stamp i need to put this stamp as well on the check now i can sign i have i have i have made uh, the company as either of the partners could sign the check i can sign as well as the other partner could sign but we'll have to put this stamp on so this is the stamp of our company uh, the first company that i opened 
एम एस सी एस नाउ इट्स इज स्टिल वर्किंग इट्स स्टिल ऑपरेटिंग दिस इज दी एस एल स्टैम्प सो वी हैव आई हैव सो मेनी स्टैम्प एन अदर स्टैम्प द स्टैम्प फॉर द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ टी एस एल दिस इज द एम एस सी एस बिजनेस स्टैम्प सो प्रॉब्लम फोर और फाइव स्टैम्प आर देयर एंड आई एम गोइंग टू ओपन एन अदर बिजनेस एज यू नो वील बी ओपनिंग बिजनेस फॉर द ई बुक्स and we'll have another stem another account just telling you the formalities of the business okay interestingly there is the federal bureau of revenue by federal i we mean the main government of pakistan then there are provincial governments as well sindh government punjab government kpk government you have to have another registration with srb ssbr sin bureau of revenue one we have the federal bureau of revenue we registered are there most of the companies are fine most of the uh, uh, basic businesses are fine by only registering in fbr but then whenever you are earning something the sin revenue board also comes in knocks at your door hello you are doing a you are doing a business in in sin haven't you paid our taxes we say yes you you also need you also we'll also be registering with you as well so you also need to get yourself if your business becomes a, a little bit bigger they'll start uh, asking you why haven't you registered with the sind revenue board so these are the types of businesses i've told you two types of businesses sole proprietor and partnership both of these are called unlimited liability business just try to understand this these businesses are name given given to a group of people or a person but that person is there to stand and honor the commitment of the business for example abbas bhai opens a barber shop he buys 50 equipments from someone for 1 crore he agrees that my barber shop name the aakk barber shop will pay you back back that 1 crore rupees aakk will pay you back and abbas bhai somehow is sick and his personal uh, finances uh, go down and the business also doesn't perform well people who want to take the, back their money who would they communicate who would they come and uh, ask the money for abbas bhai or aakk if you are a sole proprietor or a partnership you are one and the same thing if aakk doesn't pay abbas will have to pay if if they will sell the shop of aakk and if still they are getting only 50 lakh rest of the 50 lakh they'll sell the house of a bus they'll sell car of a bus they'll sell everything that a bus has because a bus by is the owner of that business and this is a unlimited unlimited liability business everything that is liable for business is liable for a bus if there are two partners both will have to pay if the business fails these partners will have to pay this is called unlimited liability unincorporated in pakistan we don't use the term incorporation but just for your reference this is these are two basic types of business then there are two other types although we'll not be doing that business at the moment i believe but let me briefly tell you there are two other types that these are the limited types of businesses the limited liability businesses there are there is private private limited and there is public limited we'll not discuss in detail how they are formed what is their, the benefit and what is, because they require much more amounts they require much more documents too much of stuff for a basic business to start so but what i was trying to cover was a limited a private limited company and a public limited company both these companies if they fail to give back the money that they are owed the owners of the company will not be contacted 
for example the company is in bad shape and everything the company had was sold and the company had a 1 crore liability and the company is able to pay 50 lakh after selling everything now the 50 lakh remains those 50 lakhs will not be recovered from the owners of the company this means that the business is another thing and the owner is another thing when you are dealing with the business consider about business don't consider owner to be responsible for the business this is how limited liability works this is why private limited and private limited don't have specific owners they have shareholders private limited and public limited have shareholders and in private limited companies you can give shares to people you know people in your family let's open a family business and i'll give 10 percent share to that 50 percent share to that and open a limited liability company in public limited liability i can sell my share to anyone in the public i can put ad and tell that i am trying to sell my shares 10 rupees each share whoever wants to buy my shares buy my shares you can offer public those shares but this, the, the largest company is public limited company the most difficult company to form is public limited company government would ask you ask many things from you they'll want you your accounts to be published annually your accounts to be checked by independent chartered accountants there are so many uh, responsibilities that a public limited company has to fill because they are selling to public public they are selling their shares to uh, common persons and they could be misleading government wants the public limited company to be transparent to show everything that they are doing so that people might not buy their buy their share when they are going in the, in loss people would know when to buy the share of a public limited company when not to buy the share of the company so we are not going to make a public limited company at the moment if you want to if you are about to make a public limited company then you are not watching this course if you are watching this course it means tomorrow you are not going to go and open this company for opening a public limited companies you have to have lots of money lots of experience lots of prior background before the government would allow you to open a public limited company i am a, a partner in a partnership I, I have a partnership company i have a sole proprietor company i am also a director in a private limited company i have a, i have shares in a private limited company active shares so and i have purchased shares in public limited companies as well so i've had experience of all four types of businesses three i uh, actively participate in the management of the three businesses fourth is only for the investment purpose okay so the four types of businesses in the four types of businesses okay people are talking about taking a break so we discussed how a business is formed in Pakistan we discuss technical details of a business now don't you think that when you're opening a business all you have to do is go to the FBR website and open a business by the way it is called IRIS IRIS dot GOV something search for iris and you will get the website do you think it's okay for any person to go to Iris and get the company registered? That's it. I've started my business. Shouldn't he first think about it, discuss this with someone, see if it's better for him to do that business or not? Is that business better or another business better? This is where the formation of idea comes. How does the idea of doing this specific business comes to your mind? Why do you want to open a shop which sells ship, which, which sells fish? Why you want to be a fishmonger? Why do you want to open a barber shop? Why do you want uh, a biryani shop to be open? Whatever you are deciding, I said formation is easy. That's why I discussed formation first. Formation is not a problem you only need to know different nitty gritties about the formation if you are opening a partnership or if you are opening a sole proprietor or even if you are opening without registration all is possible this is what I wanted to tell you but this is not the first thing that you go when you decide that you do when you decide to open a business that you go and open and get yourself registered this is not on first you'll have to think why you are doing this business what business should you be doing 
will have to take uh, uh, into account so many things. How much money do you have? What are the connections do you have? Is there someone who's going to mentor you? Is there someone who's going to show you the way? So this is a much, much detailed practical discussion that we'll be having in the this topic of how idea of a business is generated and how it is vouched. How do we get it checked by someone who's more experienced, who's also in that business? How do we take help from someone? In, in in financial terms, in non-financial terms, or even in the terms of advice. How do we get advice? How do we get nominated by someone? Okay, yeah, this person is good. This shop is good. Get business from that shop. Like Before starting the business, you have to know the feasibility of your decision. This is the key term. Before starting the business, you will have to know exactly how feasible feasibility of that business. Now we'll talk about how do we how do we do that? How do we make a feasibility? How do we know if this is the right business that we should be doing? What is the process of idea generation, brainstorming? How many people do we touch upon? Should we always be asking everyone? Bhai sahab, kaun sa karubar karu? Aapka kya mashfar hai? Bhai sahab, kaun sa karubar karu? Aapka kya mashfar hai? You, have you seen people doing that? Yes, I have seen so many people who never start any business. They just keep on asking. What business should I be starting? What do you, what do you think? What is working these days? What is most, most running item these days? If you keep on asking, you will not be able to act. If you act without asking, without discussion, that will also that could also be a blunder. So there has to be a, a balanced way. We'll discuss that in our next class. We are ending our class here. And what I was doing was I was telling you why I started from formation because formation was easy. So I wanted it to let's, let's just discuss it shortly and then set it aside and come and dive deep into the main topic, which is how we go about opening a business from ideas perspective, from feasibilities perspective. And this would be a very detailed discussion. I believe it would be a longer class. Maybe it might be uh, broken into two sessions, but this is how we'll cover. We'll cover the idea. Then we'll go, go into production. How we give services. What is the process of giving services or producing things? How a process is managed, how quality is managed how consistency is managed, things like these will be covered here. The action of doing that business, things that come along the action of doing that business. Then how do we grow our business? Marketing will be discussed here, sales will be discussed, uh, acquisitions, selling. Sometimes selling your own business is a way of growing your own business. Did you know that? It's a very interesting story. Go if you have time. Uh, there are people who run a business called Wiz, W I Z. It's a network security business, provides uh, security services for the internet operators. Wiz. Google offered to buy Wiz at $23 billion. You can't imagine how much money is that. I am literally telling you, you, if you have $23 billion, let's suppose if everyone in our school divide those $23 billion among ourselves, even then the amount of money, you could do everything you want and still have everything. Only keeping that money in bank and from the profit of that $23 billion, you could buy aeroplanes. You could uh, fly it to the world, do anything you want. It is such a huge amount, $23 billion. And this company refused to sell themselves to Google. They believe they are larger than that. They are going to go for an IPO. They are going to go become a public limited company. They are offering their shares to public. My point was study who is the owner of this, a, a business of $23 billion. Who were they before they were doing Viz? 15 years back, 
or probably 20 years back they made another company a, a social secu uh, 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 internet security company and they sold it to microsoft they made a company they created the company they made it huge then they sold it to microsoft they started their own similar company with the name of viz what they made for example i made a school i ran the school this was a successful school now i know how to run a school someone came to me and said i want to buy your school for 50 crore i said okay buy my school i sold him school using 1 crore open another school now i am the more expert person i started another successful school this is somehow selling your own business is another way of growth you sell one one type of your business earn some re rewards and open another so similar type of business so uh, some sometime if you have some time go and read about viz how the owners of viz transformed uh, from one company to another and then they are now about to sell that viz as well the the deal didn't broke uh, break out but the uh, didn't su succeed the the deal did not succeed but you could know the worth of the company by that offer although they did not sell it for 23 billion dollar but you know it's it's about their 23 billion dollars worth in 15 years so they were able to do that by selling their first company and it was sold for a, a few million dollars like 115 million or 130 million or probably as something around that they earned they sold their first company for a few million dollars for a 100 million dollars or something and from that million dollars they made billion dollar company so it's a very interesting uh, case if you could go and read about that i've spoken for a, i believe uh, the video has been going on for more than an hour now i'm sorry i i wanted the videos to be shorter than an hour but that's it sometimes you get carried away and uh, we'll be coming back with the idea generation which would be very important class please do not miss that we are trying to hold two classes every week so that students would be able to digest whatever i'm telling you rather than having a class every day we are having classes two classes every week and we are also teaching technology to students and we are taking the the time in between to teach technologies so we'll meet you inshallah in a few days uh, be happy god bless you till until the next time allah hafiz